great Scott. If my calculations are correct, you are listening to this before your fantasy football drafts have taken place. I have been to the future. And those that follow the advice from the Fantasy Footballer's Ultimate Draft Kit had a spectacular season and with certain many victories. It's almost as if Biff had given each of them a copy of Greatest Sports Almanac. I'd highly recommend heading over to www.ultimatedraftkit.com without any further delay. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, August 28th, Jason Moore is here. Mike, the fantasy hitman. I'm Andy Holloway, and we're, we're ready we're, for a show. Let's see where we're going. We don't need roads. No, we've got uh fantasy time machine episode today. Great Scott. Some uh this is that, a that S is just <laughs> Scott. <laughs> this is one of my favorite episodes cuz we uh you know, we get to prognosticate, we get to talk about players that were huge surprises last year and try to see, you know, it, that's the fun part of fantasy. If it, People want it to play out according to chalk and the ADP and how everybody thinks about every player because it feels unjust. You did the work and you did the research and you want it to just work out exactly as it says on paper. But if it did, this would not be fun. No, and, and the, the ones who win are the ones who grab the guys that didn't work out due to ADP and not poorly, but you know they, they're the ones that drafted Puka in the last round. And you got to find... The, the windows and the things, like I, I, you know, spoiler, I know on today's episode, we're talking about, you know, last year's Rashad White. But that was that was a sixth round pick who was like, how did he volume his way to being a really, really good fantasy asset? And, and taking a look at the guys who have things in common, I, I think that I love this episode. I think it's really valuable. It is. Uh, it's going to be fun. So we've each picked some candidates for uh, a number of categories, stepping into the time machine, looking into the future. And um, obviously being perfectly correct on every one. Of course. The Ultimate Draft Kit, you heard it at the top. It's available right now. You got drafts this weekend. Our big league of record draft is the morning of kickoff day. So that is exciting. We get to draft and then we'll be watching the Thursday night game. But you've got drafts all the way through kickoff, ultimatedraftkit.com. And the draft analyzer, if you want to get your draft graded by us, um, that is in the UDK Plus. That is very fun as well. You can put your team in there, strengths and weaknesses. And uh, so you can check that out, ultimatedraftkit.com. And then, of course, we want to invite you to participate in the Megala Bowl, our tournament style super league with. I got you, Jay. Th thank you. I, I know, you know, I, I'm I'm usually the one doing the voice. You should not do the, the, sh the shark is on rest. Yeah, yeah. My my voice is uh, still re recuperating, but it is a pleasure to hear the shark, um, <laughs> and not be the one doing the shark. That is, it was it was a joy. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Yeah, you. Uh, there's a uh, our our. I think our ex account posted a picture of Jason breaking his voice, like the <laughs> yeah. the moment yeah, we, that it happened. Yeah, he was just on this show saying he had no idea. What happened? I think we when, know. When could it possibly have happened? And yet we have a photo. We can hear your voice going away in a photograph. Yeah, it's true if you've seen it. Uh, so join. There's over 12,000 of you in there so far. Megalobull.com. And uh, you can win a spot in the Listener League, win an ultimate Foot Clan membership for life. And you have a chance to join uh, before the drafts begin, August 31st through September 4th. That is Megalobull.com. All right, let's jump in. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I am uh, excited to kick off this segment. Hungry for more candidates. Um, I'm going to go with Michael Wilson, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. So I'm going to go a little deeper here. but I like it. Uh, the Cardinals offense is one that, you know, Mike has uh, Kyler Murray as a my guy. The Cardinals spent some or, or spent some money picking up Zay Jones. Zay Jones has been suspended. And Michael Wilson with a, was a third-round pick who did flash last year. Mm -hmm. um, the Cardinals had no receiving options. So Michael Wilson received, you know, the predominant um, coverage by defenses in this offense, and he only had half a season with Kyler Murray. So – he had some big games. He, he had a 7 for 76 and 2 game against San Francisco. He's going to get a chance to start outside with Kyler Murray and you finally have another receiver in Marvin Harrison that's going to get the, you know, the lion's share of the coverage. So, do I think Michael Wilson is, you know, T Higgins not yet, but he's going to have opportunities that he has not had before and a sophomore season. This is when players that um, showed something as a rookie have an opportunity to break out. It's really funny the the fact that you know second year wide receivers are just a great bet in fantasy. They they are one of the you know easiest layup picks to find value against their ADP. And Michael Wilson, be, I think because of Marvin Harrison Jr. coming in, it, he, I, I, it's because of also McBride. Sure, I mean, it, but as as in the wide receiver core, especially with Zay Jones now being suspended, he is the number two wide receiver on this team he'll be there I believe in two wide receiver sets as a year two should receiver be, yeah. for what should be a good offense and a terrible defense yeah um the Cardinals have no pass rush they I don't believe that they can go four quarters they're without... actually considering starting um thin air yeah. instead of a defensive end yeah they're gonna go 10, might, on, 10 on 11 they might bring more pressure yeah and then, uh the Cardinals drafted Darius Robinson with their first round pick. He is injured. I think he's going to miss a little bit of time at weeks. Least, yeah. So yeah, they they're going to have to throw the ball a lot. I it's your turn, Jason. Okay, dude. I'm hungry for more Josh Jacobs, oh, baby. Oh, I never doubted him. <laughs> Everything I said this off season was a long con. Um, no, so th there's a lot of news. In fact, today on uh, in the news segment, I I can't wait to discuss. Um, a big breaking hullabaloo. Yeah, you can say it now. Buddy. Well, they, we'll, we'll talk mean, about just... the Kyron Punt returner news oh, okay. later. Okay. But for now, the Josh Jacobs news is news that is actually important, and there's nothing that can be done about it. So I have spent the off season worried about his efficiency a little bit, but more worried about the fact that Lafleur always uses a committee. He that that's what he wants. That's what he says. That's what he he says it so confidently, like. Guys, you know my system. I don't like putting a workhorse back out there. But guess what? He don't have no choice no more. Like, to start this season, you have Emmanuel Wilson as the backup running back. Well, let's break that news. A.J. Dillon was put on season-ending season -ending injured reserve. That is a headline that's part of this story that nobody knows yet. Yeah, so. and also part of it, reportedly, Marshawn Lloyd was going to go onto the IR and miss four games. That was – retracted so he was, he has avoided the IR I mean the, obviously Lloyd is still dealing with a hamstring injury if they were even considering that but they're not going to use uh, Lloyd won't IR. be ready for week one right yeah yeah I agree they're not going to put Lloyd on the IR and use a designation to return they're just going to keep him on the uh they're just they're not going to do anything with him but he will miss time yeah put it this way let's say we're heading into week two of the NFL season and week one started the way that we 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 thought this was a three way backfield committee. Everyone was healthy, and in week one, AJ Dillon goes down to a season ending injury, and Marshawn Lloyd gets injured for at least like two or three weeks. We we know he's going to miss a chunk of time. I mean, Josh Jacobs, you know, skyrockets. There's just not the choice to have a true committee. So, uh, you know, and and the Packers are a great offense. They're due for rushing touchdown upside, and Josh Jacobs has been on the every other year plan. You know what I mean? Good year, sure. bad year. Good year, bad year. Have, He's coming off the bad year. Have you moved him so much in your draft rankings? Like, are you taking him ahead of Pacheco now? I I, I haven't gotten to that point because okay. I don't think this will be a season long thing, and I still worry. And I I love Pacheco, but I th I think it's fair to put him in that tier. Okay. Um, he he is on a great offense. Projects right now to have a lot of volume. I've what about Kyron, a player that people are 
questioning the workhorse back, whereas Jacobs is falling into the workhorse back. Yeah, I mean, I, I've still got Kyron um, ahead. Ky Kyron, to me, is where he's been the whole offseason, which is my running back five. He said, it's like we always say, stay stone. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I think there's news I'm, that you change on, and this is news I'm changing on. I've moved Josh J Jacobs up tremendously when, when we get to the news and talk more about the 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 one line about a punt return thing. Yep. It's like nothing has changed. This is – We'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk about, about it. We have sure. different opinions. We're uh, still hungry. Mike, uh, uh, hungry for more? Jordan Mason, because this was huge news from yesterday as well while all the cuts were going on. Elijah Mitchell, the – backup for years for the San Francisco 49ers was put on a season ending IR uh he, he had a hamstring injury I read that it wasn't really widely reported but then he like re-aggravated it that was kind of what turned into this we got to shut him down we got to make some decisions here on top of that JP Jordan Mason Ponchez out here with the elite name but he has been he's been playing fantastic he has been a like he's always been a speedster. He's if you've watched the preseason games, he looks like he fits the scheme perfectly. We've re, we haven't seen him in a ton of real life game action, but last year against Dallas, you know he was mopping up ten for sixty nine and a touchdown. Like it, it's a good game. It's the backup for Christian McCaffrey. Or I should say the backup for San Francisco has always had huge fantasy value, and Mason I think is. He's looked so good. I think that he has looked tremendous, and he is now like Blake Corum in a range where if I'm in a 12-teamer, he's he's in consideration to to draft and sit on my bench as an upside play. All right, that was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. Get almost almost anything for game day delivered with Uber Eats, official on-demand food delivery partner of the NFL. Order now. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, now we can talk about the Kyron Williams blurb from yesterday that is um, what I think is scaring some fantasy players. It is scaring fantasy players. That is, that is a factual statement because his ADP has dropped in certain places. The Rams head coach, Sean McVay, said running back Kyron Williams will be their team's punt returner. We generally generally speaking, not just isolated to the Rams, generally when you find out a player is going to be involved in special teams, you cringe as a yeah, as a fantasy yes. manager because you just don't want that opportunity to be injured. It's another uh, it's normally something reserved for players that you are protecting. Damian Pierce last year being named the kick returner comes to mind where it was like, oh, what? Give Antonio Gibson it happened too. Yeah. So this news puts some fear into fantasy players. Now, I am a Kyron Williams manager. I spent an offseason uh, trading for him in our league of record, making a calculated decision. And as much as I'd love to say that our home rosters never bias or impact the way we view a player, we're human beings. And sometimes, you know, it's chicken or egg, right? You trade for the player because of what you believe and you believe in the player. And so you go trade for them and, and they, they work together and, Look, I I am on the record as being concerned, not because of one piece of news from Sean McVay, but because the more, like eventually, like if you're dressing up for Halloween and you're going to dress up as a duck, like... I'm gonna, I need a bill? Yeah, but like, okay. you know, maybe you put the shoes on. I need a tail. You put the shoes on first. You put the tail on. The like shoes. you don't. Or whatever you you put on parts of the costume and eventually ducks wear shoes. Eventually, a I've, costume you'd be. I've never seen it, Jason. I've never seen a duck with shoes. Like you're not a duck. I, I, you don't become a duck on Halloween, Jason. Oh, okay. You do become a. You wear a costume of a duck. Right. I just thought okay. I had like a webbed foot. <laughs> so, yes. I mean, whatever, man. You you see some weird ducks out there. How would you put it on? How would you put your webbed foot? I'd on? slide my foot into the webbed foot. Oh, okay. So it, it's like a chew. Yeah, okay. Listen, eventually you put the bill on and you are a duck is my point. And this has been an off season where I started with concerns. Blake Corum's my favorite. He was my favorite running back coming out of college in Michigan. He has done it all. I have tremendous confidence in the Rams and who they draft and what they believe they can do in the offense. Blake Corum has moved from the second team to the first team. Uh, Sean McVay has been, you know, you talk about Doug Peterson trying to say that Travis Etienne needs a break. Like, they've never done that. 
Sean McVay has said it so many times and really needs that for Kyron Williams, who did get hurt. And now you're making him your punt returner. So for me, this is a downgrade because I went from, uh, in my head, a 90-95% chance of being a workhorse back at the beginning of the offseason to the draft happening, to, to practice happening, and now he looks like a duck. And mm. so now it's 80% or 70%. And I want the workload chance. Not that he has to have it to be amazing, but um, so, Jason is on the opposite mm. side, and I want to give him the floor. Well, I, I, before we give him the floor, I want to hear what what does that mean to you? Like where has it – like Jameer Gibbs. Uh, I would take Gibbs over him. Jacobs. I would be thinking hard about Jacobs, yeah. ETN. Yep. Okay. Take Sa one. Take one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you you have, I would take him you have above moved him down. I would take him above two. Pacheco. Okay. Uh still. But uh, but Jason is not concerned at all. So I want to give the other yeah. side. And I am more interested in Jason being right here. That is much better for my team. I don't want to dress up like a duck. So when when Blake Corum was drafted, it definitely affected things. It, it affected the outlook of Kyron Williams. But what it didn't do is it didn't say, "Oh, they're in a committee now." It, like as in, he's not the primary ball carrier. I don't expect. I don't want. Genuinely, I don't want him to be on the field ninety three percent of the time. Last year, he was the only player at twenty fantasy points uh, or more per game and half PPR, along with Christian McCaffrey. If you take five opportunities away every game from Kyron and then you get 17 games out of it that is way better for fantasy so when Blake Corum came I mean I've got Blake Corum with 136 carries this year I have it being a shared opportunity however Kyron Williams is the main guy and if you listen to the whole quote talking about how this was a question about releasing a certain player and he just mentioned he said yeah Kyron's our punt returner and now we've got Blake Corum and we've got um Ronnie Rivers where if Kyron needs a spell, he can get it. I see that as a good thing for him, but I don't see this as new information. We've known that it, they drafted Blake Corum for months. We've known that he's been having run with the ones for a while. Kyron Williams, I, I don't know if you remember this, last year when he started so hot on fire, uh, he was their punt returner last Weeks one year. through three, weeks, yeah. weeks one through three, when he still got a lot of work. Uh, Cooper Why'd they Cup, stop? Cooper Cup was there because they didn't have any backups. They Kyron... The, the thing is, is I'm not saying that Kyron is going to get the insane workload he got last year, but I haven't been saying that at all since they drafted Corm. I've been saying he is their main running back, and he's going to be really, really valuable for fantasy. I still believe that. Um, you know, uh, Cooper Cup was their full season punt returner when he was the offensive player of the year and the Triple Crown Award winner. This isn't a role. I I don't think McVay looks at this like. Like, well, I can't use him as a running back now. This is like I want him to have more opportunities to impact the game. And so I, I, I just think it's over. I just drafted him in the fourth round of a real draft. It was super flex. So it was a little, you know, you wouldn't have expected him to be um, up where he was. But I was happy to grab him in, in the fourth. If he if he drops to being the running back 10, 11, 12, I'll scoop him up everywhere. I'm mostly worried that he's going to miss drives, not plays. He w he will because McVeigh, which means he's going to miss touchdown opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I I will say this: like McVeigh, all they they play fast. They the reason that he's always had a workhorse, uh, a guy that you know whether it was Gurley or whether for small stretches it was Cam Akers or whether it was Daryl Henderson, he employs a back that stays on the field for all three downs, and I and that is what Corum is. Corum can come in and give him relief and play drives. I I agree that. We're kind of saying the same thing. The only difference is I don't think that's it's just changed you, it's, for me. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, and I'm not – look, this is not saying one of us believes Kyron's a top five back and the other believes he's, you know, shouldn't be drafted. That's insane. Like, Kyron is very highly ranked. But when you invest in Kyron, you want more security, and the punt return thing gives me a little bit of fear. Um, and, and Ronnie Rivers is healthy again. And I, I don't ignore him. The team loves him. The yeah. team was using him even with Kyron on the field before he got hurt, um, so it'll it'll be interesting. I just I want to I want to believe that Kyron can finish number one. I do not believe that anymore. That's the difference. Okay. Okay. That's the difference. That's fair. Uh, yeah. Antonio Brown returned 187 punts. Yeah, but wide, wide receivers are different to me. Well, genuinely, okay. they, there's a lot of them that return kicks. I mean, that's happened a lot in the past. Um, not I, as many running backs. I. I I moved Kyron down. What if CMC was named the punt returner tomorrow? That would put some fear in you. If I wouldn't no, change it. I wouldn't move Chris McCaffrey at all. I, I bumped, His chance of injury is very high on yeah, those plays. That's why. I bumped Kyron down 
slightly. Uh, I don't even know if he actually, like the, the market share that moved, I don't know if that moved him in my rankings overall, but it's a, this is an exciting moment because this feels like a pivotal piece of draft-changing news that we're going to look back on and go, man, we didn't react enough to the punt news, or you're going to say, look at all those idiots who overreacted to the punt return news. I think it is it will be an apex this moment. This is not a Kyron siren. Nice. Okay. I love it. Uh, Jamar Chase, Mike, he's – uh, Zach Taylor says he's confident he will play in week one. That's right. <laughs> that's that's pretty, right. Pretty important. Well, it, well this, I mean, this is this is actually fair to report on because we had, you know, whispers like growing louder and louder by the moment of Jamar Chase won't step on a field until he gets his contract extension. His leverage situation is not like Brandon Ayuk's where uh, Jamar Chase has two more years that the, the Cincinnati Bengals – have the rights to him to be on the team. So the and it's been really wishy washy uh comments from Taylor. And the most recent ones, it was it was far more of a no, I Jamar Chase is going to be there in week one. Uh Kendra Miller is going to start on the IR for the Saints while I don't know if you saw this, Jason, Dennis Allen, uh one of your biggest oh, uh, yeah. enemies. I just uh, love him, man. He came out and went on a full-on I love Taysom Hill rant yesterday. I don't yeah. know if you got to oh, follow yeah. that. It was like, I don't know if you've ever seen a player like this. Nobody's like him in the history of the NFL. He does everything. He's amazing. He does my taxes. He did it. It was a whole bunch of that. Did I, you see when – He's uh, nothing like Kendra Miller, I believe, is what he said. <laughs> did you see he he tried to have Taysom Hill be the, uh, the, the Mike linebacker? He uh back when um is this is this, this real? Is, this no, is, no, he this talked is about honestly it. true. I think it was on the Kay Adams show, um, like a week or two ago. He he wanted to use him on defense, sure, but he wasn't the head coach, and it right. was, and even in that he he wants Taysom to be the OC. He couldn't. <laughs> I'll bet he couldn't even name Sean Payton. He's like he's like you know the head coach wanted. I'm like I don't know. I don't like anything. The he says. I, I am. I mean the the IR is not surprising. I am a little bit surprised that they didn't just shut him down the way that Dennis Allen hates him. So you're not coming back, dude. We'll see you next year. Dalvin Cook was signed to the practice squad for the Cowboys, who released Royce Freeman and Malik Davis. Tom Pelissero is so excited. <laughs> Mike, Mike, so is, excited. Mike because is the, so bent out of shape over because Tom Pelissero. The Pelicero. tweets are out of control. It's he fine. I it's think a, it's he's an, on the it's take, an, man. It's an agent tweet, man. That's why. That's why I'm saying it's so ridiculous. That look, this is a this is an NFL reporter who just called Dalvin Cook a marquee signing. Do, do you know how they get their insights and their tips and their tricks? Yeah, they work they with the agents wheels. and they grease the wheels. If you this were running felt, that account, you would you would copy paste the same tweet because that's what he oh, did. I'm gonna take that money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm not an ethical man. I'm gonna take that money oh, like Tom. Man, you're gonna. Look, no, you're going to hear from him. <laughs> I don't think he took money. I think he's just, you know, you, you rub my bag, I rub yeah. yours type of thing. It, it So the, the signing is, look, they they cut Royce Freeman yesterday. If you missed that during during the trim down, Dalvin will go into the practice squad. We'll, I don't know if he makes it onto the active roster at any point. If this, like, if, if you're not in on my Rico Dattle take, I don't blame you. It's it's a bold prediction. It's It's a hotter take. But Dalvin Cook should not uh, – if you were in, Dalvin Cook should not be pushing you out. All right. Uh, just really quickly because we got to get, get through the news here. Trey Sermon still the backup for JTT. Yeah, Evan, Evan Hull, Hull was waived. Yeah. Was waived. The Browns released Deonta Foreman, uh, resulting in a number of texts – or, uh, sorry, tweets at me. Um, but the rumor is that he's going to be returning. I brought Deonta Foreman up in a Hungry for More segment during the preseason when he had a pretty good game – um, we'll see if he's back on the roster. If you're, you're a four-year vet or or more, then you don't go through the waiver system. You're a free agent to sign anywhere. So this could very easily be a situation where they talk to him, say, "Hey, we, we're going to resign you." It's accounting. They only have two active running backs on the roster right now. You can't go into the season like that. And then uh, Odell Beckham is on the IR to begin the pup. He's on the pup on the pup to begin. And the Tim year. Patrick, yeah, sign him with the Lions. Yeah, practice squad guy. Um, He'll work his way yeah. up. Yeah, he'll start there. But I mean, um, it's hard when you've been hurt that many years yeah. in a row, like to make an impact. But they got opportunity there for sure. 
That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usa.com slash insurance. Uh, back with the Fantasy Time Machine in a moment. All right, this just in. Kyron Williams is now, um, he's actually bringing the water bottles to the other running backs. Oh, no. So, oh, no. I don't know if that, what that means to you. Does that? <laughs> that then, now, that's a needle mover. Yeah, that is a needle that, mover. Now you're changing. For sure. Marty, you've got to come back with me. Where? Back to the future. Oh, I this is my favorite show. Good work, Mike. Thank yeah, you. incredible, incredible creativity. Hey, man, sometimes you got to just pay homage. Yeah, no, it's, it's to great. greatness. Um, indeed. All right, we're looking at the fantasy time machine segment here. Looking first to find 2024's version of Rashad White. He was a sixth round pick, drafted RB twenty four, and was. Arguably the second most valuable player in fantasy at the running back position from week seven on. That is a majority of the season. That was 22 opportunities a game. Um, he was the RB2, and that was incredible. He was an, a really good pass catcher. You cannot argue efficiency on the ground. You can argue he was just dynamic through the air. He yep. would make the first man miss. Um, he ran the most routes among running backs, fourth most receptions, third most fantasy uh, or sorry, receiving yards. So we're looking for a dead zone running back who could make his way into being an RB one for fantasy. Uh, I'll kick it. Uh, I'll kick us off because mine is the kick highest it. drafted. Um, but he's still in the fifth round, which I think is a great value. When I think about Rashad White, I think about an inefficient player who PPR'd his way to real greatness, and I genuinely believe that's what happens with Alvin Kamara this year. Alvin Kamara is not going to be a super efficient player at this point in his career, not for this system. Um, Derek Carr just giving him the ball right over the line, right in front of a linebacker, over and over and over. That being said, from weeks 4 through 15, remember he started the season um, suspended last year, he was, the, he was the running back two in total fantasy points scored. Um and it was on the same basis of just non-stop checkdowns. Uh, now you have Kendra Miller, who is a, a non-factor, at least to start the season. And Jamal Williams, no matter how much the team loves him, they he, he he's wonderful. Love the dude. He's done. He's not. He doesn't have much left to give. So I really think you're just going to have non-stop volume for Kamara. And they don't really have a great receiving core, you know, you're, you're talking about Chris Olave. One of the reasons I like oh, Chris Olave a lot the Shahid this year. I was coming after you, man. Yeah, I know Shahid, this, this will be the year, but, um, Camara is going to be their number two target, I believe in this offense. And if that's the case, you're just going to have pure volume in the fifth round for a player who it doesn't matter if it's pretty, don't watch the saints games. I try not to. Yeah, no, I mean, Camara showed it last year already that he can do that. Like this is not, a player that we haven't seen it from. Like he was an inefficient dominator in fantasy from weeks four through 15 last I, year. So I, I hate where I have Kamara ranked. I, I no have, one has the courage to move him where they really no, believe, I've got where him they at believe nine. he is. I've got him at oh, running nine. back nine. Okay. And it, it feels, oh, yeah. I oh, I hate where you have I him I take ranked. it back. You've got I hate courage. where I have him ranked as well. But I, I go and I look at the numbers. I'm just like, I think that's going to happen. I'm not drafting him as the running back nine. He's in the fifth round. I'm going to wait and get value. But I, I do think at the end of this year, he's probably a low-end RB1 on the back of, I mean, if you're in a PPR or a half PPR right. league, not in standard. It's Tony Pollard for me. Last year, it was all the failed expectations. This year, he's the RB26, which is right around where Rashad White was drafted. He is, uh, to me, this is a DeAndre Swift, Kenny Gainwell situation. Um, I know people like Tajay Spears. I think Pollard's the better player. He played every snap of the Titans' uh, first drive. He's going to be the goal line back. That's what Swift did. Like, you can show respect to the incumbent, which is exactly what Philadelphia did. They said, Kenny Gainwell was here. DeAndre Swift is the new guy we gave the contract to. We're going to say you're a starter. And then, the, then on the field, Kenny Gainwell couldn't do enough to 
to sustain, you know hold off DeAndre Swift. That's the exact situation I expect in Tennessee. I think Tony Pollard is the better running back. I think the offense is better than people think, and I think that you're going to see it over time. So when you look at a player who you know let you down being drafted in the first round last year, why don't you try the seventh round out? That might be a lot better situation. <laughs> I'm going to go with Javante Williams. I think he fits the mold exactly of what we were watching about Rashad White last year. Javante was very inefficient this past year, and yet the volume was was still way up. Now you have Samaje Piron, uh, Piron, Samaje Piron, and his fifty six targets going away from this system. Yes, Jaleel McLaughlin will one hundred percent see more action. He will see an uptick, but I think that Javante is going to just purely volume his way there, and you're hoping. You're hoping that because he has had another full off season to rehab, strengthen, recover from the knee injury, that it is not as bad as it was last year. I think it's a fair assumption because Samaj P. Ryan has been released from the Denver yep. backfield. So you're talking about a player that was handpicked by Coach Payton versus a player that was drafted before he was there, and yet Javante's still around in number one, and people are just scared. So. He had he had 58 targets last year I mean like there, there is a chance that that actually goes up all right let's find 2024 is Jordan Love uh, Jordan Love was the court, quarterback 26 last year so this was like undrafted um, unproven young uh, he ends up with 32 passing touchdowns he has another four on the ground completely left for dead and instead ends up a top 10 quarterback on a top 10 offense who you uh, got, Jay? Well, I, I will say this. I, I I like Andy's answer probably the best of the three of ours. Um, this one, my, my answer is not a young guy that's been left for dead. Obviously, he is uh, later in his career. But Matthew Stafford, when I look at Jordan Love and what made him great, was he had all these weapons to throw the ball to. And, and you know, it was like the, the touchdowns came for Jordan Love. And we've seen Matthew Stafford um, – be a great touchdown thrower. Now, as a Ram, the, especially this last year, Kyron was the machine on the ground. The touchdowns, you know, he was great through the 20s. And then and then it wasn't like he was bad or struggled to throw touchdowns. It was just Kyron was – they were really good at just run, running in touchdowns. But you've got years before, multiple years as a top five fantasy quarterback. Uh, Andy, you brought up on the live show your belief in, in Puka and Cooper Cup as great receiving options. And I do think if you're looking – Okay, what is a quarterback this year who's kind of left for dead in drafts, who's later drafted, but has the weapons to maybe throw for forty five hundred and thirty five in, in the in the real late rounds? Stafford to me would be the the guy I would go after. For me, it's Trevor Lawrence. Oh, it's Trevor Lawrence. I mean, the sentiment around Jordan Love to start the year was bad. It is very bad around Trevor Lawrence right now. Um, I'm a big Brian Thomas Jr. believer. Uh, I like what Doug Peterson normally does on the offensive side. And Lawrence is somebody that was, you know, that has the ceiling to do something special. If the season comes together the right way, he actually tied Brock Purdy last year with the most 20 plus yard passing touchdowns. And we've talked a lot about the near misses. He's looked pretty good in the preseason. He's had stretches of games where he's been elite as a passer and nobody wants him. That left for dead applies very, very um, specifically yes. to Trevor Lawrence. So, you know, if you believe that Brian Thomas Jr. has more of a upper echelon ceiling, then you're talking about the fact that he actually added something to this offense that is pretty special. Ingram is going to be heavily involved. So he has the weapons. And so I think I think Lawrence fits that bill is is the ignored, but maybe you don't ignore him after four weeks. L Lawrence totally fits the bill here. Uh, going back to the beginning of last year, I did not believe Jordan Love could do what he did. I I really genuinely didn't didn't see that as one of the outcomes. And Trevor Lawrence, you know, we we've seen him enough where you go, ah, he's not that great. But you know, we bring up those missed touchdowns. Those how many a handful of missed touchdowns? All the injuries that Trevor Lawrence had. If you want a guy who could really come out and establish, establish himself as like a future star the way Jordan Love did, Trevor Lawrence fits the bill. I have uh, – I was the most uh, outspoken on the show about Trevor Lawrence last year. I hated his ADP. 
it the the it has swung way too far for Trevor Lawrence last year in the second half weeks 11 through 14 QB 1 6 5 11 uh, and then he kind of got injured there at the end of the season is I, I don't you take him or, or Herbert oh man I think that's that's so close I'm probably Herbert just because I be, I know Herbert's really good I think Trevor Lawrence is good ish but and we don't like Gabe Davis is un, is pretty much an invisible fantasy player that we don't talk about, probably for accurate reasons. But Gabe Davis is one of those guys that it helps the quarterback. I mean, like he's a he is a good deep ball guy, like, yeah, a big target. You 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 think he could be good for five or six touchdowns yeah, on the year, and that really helps Trevor Lawrence. The name I'm going to bring up it was because I was looking at ADP of guys in the mid twenties is Geno Smith. It would all of reasons. Jason just talked about with Stafford is looking at the Seattle offense DK Metcalf is a great wide receiver even if Tyler Lockett isn't what he once was he's still good I mean that he was good enough that they needed to give him a little bit of a contract extension and then the hope and the promise of last year's first round uh, or first wide receiver off the board in JSN and this new offensive scheme Geno Smith was actually still good last year as a quarterback the numbers weren't prolific for fantasy but it was the same average depth of target his adjusted completion rate was still at 77 percent it was just the big plays did not go there like he, like he dropped from uh, 15 passing touchdowns of 20 or more air yards down to five and that's something that should positively regress back up all right let's try to find 2024's Jake Ferguson from last year, um, undrafted tight end, ends up number two on the team in target share. And so you're looking for that weekly floor, touchdown upside. Right. And somebody that can be the number two target on the team. And for me, this is Tyler Conklin on the Jets. Conk, I mean, conk, conk. conk. Uh, you know, we've seen Aaron Rodgers is going to throw the football to the players he trusts the most. Conklin is a trustworthy target. He's a trustworthy target around the end zone. And this situation lines up with, uh, you know, you want to use the parallels. Garrett Wilson's the CD lamb of this equation, right? And Tyler Conklin, like, who's – Mike Williams is hurt. Malachi Corley's a rookie. Xavier Gibson is somebody. <laughs> I mean, Conklin knows what to do, and he actually has – reached uh, just under 100 targets the last three years. So, yeah, you know, he is being completely ignored. I don't think we've brought him up one time. Uh, it may be in passing as a sleeper tight end. So uh, I think Conklin is, you know, Conklin is a lot like Ferguson even from a, you know, he's not going to blow your mind with athleticism, but the physicality size and being a kind of, you know, lunch pail tight end, go out and do everything you're supposed to do and then be available to your quarterback – that's how Conklin hits for me. He yeah. was it, like it, last year for the Jets. It was Garrett Wilson with all of the, all of the targets, guys. Oh, I know. One hundred and sixty-eight. Second on the team is Brees Hall. Third, Tyler Conklin. So with eight, how many? With eighty-seven. With eighty-seven. Tar I mean, those are bad targets last year. But if he can get anywhere close to that type of volume from. Rodgers, I mean, that that's a huge upgrade, and I not a lot of talk. Yeah, for for me, the uh, the the Ferguson comp is Pat Fryermuth, who is right. a post hype sleeper. We have to remember how this guy's career has worked out. Like he was, he showed flashes as a rookie, but he was a rookie tight end, and rookie tight ends don't do much. His second year, which keep in mind was Kenny Pickett's rookie season, he was the he was the tight end eight, looked great, and it was like okay. So we've got we've got a real player here, and then he was injured last year, and and Kenny Pickett fell apart, and the offense fell apart. So it was like, this is a post type sleeper where I think, what did what did Kenny Pickett throw seven touchdowns like on the season? And <laughs> so you're talking about I know Russell Wilson is not the former Hall of Fame looking quarterback. I thought Fryer Me's big season was with with Big Ben. Uh, I'm not. I, I, 2022. Would that not have been Kenny Pickett's rookie no, season? No, Pickett played in 22. Yeah, Is that that was Fryermuth. Yeah, that was Fryermuth. So he's had season. two years, and then Pickett's had two years. 
uh, maybe tw- maybe three Pickett, because you, maybe Pickett didn't play much that year. That's probably what it was. Pickett pl- started twelve games, I believe, that year. Oh um, man, he only threw seven touchdowns. That's what I just said. I mean, it was <laughs> and and he was the quarterback eight. So if you get a quarterback in here wow. who can throw, you know, twenty five touchdowns, that's not a that's not a wonderful Russ number. Russell was twenty six last yeah, year. Yeah, Russell was twenty six. So if he throws twenty six, who's it going to? You know, if they don't get Brandon Ayuk. Okay, you got George Pickens looks great, but then he could be the number two target in this offense. Could be. Who, what other tight ends does Arthur Smith want to ruin? Yeah, that's, ruin you that's with? my Fair. concern. Is the the utilization of the tight ends has been sketchy? You know, for tight, the youth. tight ends are so they're so annoying sometimes because they it's you need more to make a tight end good. Like we always say, talent rises. It feels like with a tight end, you need circumstance. Yeah. Other, you yes. know, uh, the, yeah, yeah. the wide receiver. Oh, Miami stinks. Jalen Waddle, 106 targets, rookie season, doesn't matter. But with a tight end, sometimes you got to have, you got to get on the field. You got to have the right coordinator. You got to have a, a, a quarterback that likes throwing to the tight end. Like it, you almost always, almost always have to be one of the top two targets in your offense. The only exception I can really think of is like George Kittle is oftentimes the third, or you know, if you put McCaffrey out there, but. There's not a yeah, lot of I mean not Kelsey, a lot of, top two. Andrews, top two. Laporta, top two. Yeah. Uh Kincaid McBride, this year looks like top two. Top McBride. Two. Yeah. I mean it's Kincaid like Kincaid didn't have it, but now he will be. Yeah. So if if you really want to be good, not just like, oh, I'm I'm the, I'm the tight end eleven. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. occasionally good. You have to be one of the top two targets. And there's not a lot of guys that fit that bill. Fryermuth does look like he could be. Should be. Yeah, I mean it Arthur. Makes sense. Uh, I am filing this one under protest. However, I think it is. I think it's Taysom Hill, last year's tight end, twelve. Kind of your guy, I would say. Yeah, just kind of like I, your favorite player. Guys, historically I don't. Speaking. I don't like the way that the tables have turned on me here. Get him a jersey. I don't like what Dennis Allen has has done to the the Saints. I don't like what he has done mm-hmm. to me and my opinion of the Saints. Peyton did it too. But Peyton it. Did. But it's 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 magnified now. And Kendra Miller out at least four games. I think Taysom Hill is the backup running back. I think he's the backup quarterback. I think he's the backup tight end. He is he is going to be a Swiss Army knife for the team. It will be – there will be ebbs and flows. You sound so much like Dennis Allen. <laughs> you do. You sound exactly like him. You have never said <laughs> – something worse to me <laughs> on this show than what you just said right there. Oh, man. It will be like it it will be hot and cold. There's going to be games where he completely vanishes and then there's going to be games where he puts up 20 points and you win because you had Taysom Hill starting. All right, we'll take a break and we'll come back with another fantasy time machine player. All right, this one is less fun than some of the other ones. Let's find 2024 Stefan Diggs, who was the who was a first round pick in fantasy drafts last year, was uh the wide receiver four off the board. He was the wide receiver three in the first half of the year. And then he just averaged seven point five points per game over the last half, yet you kept starting him because he was Stefan Diggs because you start Stefan Diggs. So this is an alpha wide receiver who could end up being a bust in the second half of the year, a.k.a. runs out of steam for fantasy football. Yeah, Thielen that- would be another name that was like Diggs. Where <laughs> <laughs> Thielen, uh, well, he's getting more confused, it sounds, yes, it sounds like. As the days but go Thielen by. But Thielen was on fire to start the year, loses steam. But he wasn't the fourth wide receiver no. taken in no. the draft last year. And so when I looked at that, trying to comp, you know, who would I be worried about to pull a stuff on Diggs this season? I brought him up as kind of my bus pick late in June, but Devonte Adams still scares me. Um, I think he's great. I thought Stephon Diggs was great last year, going into the year. But when you're at that age where you go, okay, he he's going to turn 32 towards the end of this season. That is pretty old for a wide receiver, and the situation around him. You know, Luke Getz's office offense going to be very run heavy, super slow. You know, in 2022 they were 27th in neutral pass, 32nd neutral pass rate. This is a a poor quarterback situation on an offense I don't expect to be prolific for an older player who is being drafted very very highly. So that's where if I've got a if I've got to call a shot on someone that I want to try to avoid who is a phenomenally talented, highly drafted wide receiver, it would be Demonte Adams. Go ahead, Mike. 
Uh, I don't like to say it, but it's I will whisper the name. Both your guys shocked me. Uh, it's Debo Samuel. Uh, look, I have him ranked very wow. high. I love Debo, but it is it. I, th I think it is disingenuous to not actually look at the career of Debo and say the guys had two great years and three other years that you're like, uh, this was not good for this was not great for my fantasy football team. He will turn twenty nine this year. I mean, you guys you wanted to give Jalen Waddle a hard time yesterday of being banged up. Debo has never played a full year in his entire career. Uh, because he plays so physical. He plays like a man because he is a man. Yeah, he plays like a man and the misses, misses games like a man. <laughs> A huge part of Debo's success is all of those rushing touchdowns. Debo's gonna be twenty nine. I mean, are they probably still will? Like, this is this is not a time machine that I I hope comes true. It's just trying to look at what particular outcomes could be. Part of Diggs, for what it's worth, was it was a surprise yes. to everybody. So if you're if you're Trying to guess somebody, it's not somebody that is okay. obvious. We've never had a wide receiver at the age of 29 or older score more than two rushing touchdowns. He would become the first one ever. I, I understand that is a, it's a huge part of his game, but I just he is a player I have concerns over the second half of the year. He could start you know, slowing down. Not, I'm not going to say breaking down, but slowing down. There's literally no comp for him, though. Right. Because here's yes. all the wide receivers since 1990 with double-digit touchdowns in a season, and at least four of them coming on the ground, regardless of age. Tavon Austin did it, Debo Samuel's done it, and Debo Samuel's yeah. done it. So it's uh, like, he, yeah, of course there's no he is buddy at his age to ever done it. He's the only one that does it. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring up a name that uh, has, you know, blown out the candles on two more birthday cakes. Uh, Mike Evans is 31 years old, and I – Brings me no joy to bring this up, but the cost, the draft cost, much higher than last year. Why when is he it was two my more guy. birthday cakes? Because Diggs is twenty nine and Evans oh, is thirty one. I thought oh. Evans aged two years yeah. this season. He did compare like to Diggs. He got two birthday cakes this year. <laughs> well, I would, he did. He got one for his birthday and one. F I gave it to him for the my guy. I say, oh, you okay. know what? For my birthday, if you want to give me two cakes, yeah, I'm not gonna complain. Okay. So Evans is it's tough because this is kind of because uh, he's a first ballot Hall of Fame wide receiver. No, I, he's not. Actually, I don't think he is. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. I don't think he's a first ballot because it's almost impossible. You know, Terrell Owens didn't do it. Um, almost impossible, like his thousand yard streak. Every I think year's Rice career. and I think Rice and uh, Fitzgerald Moss are the only two that I can think of recently. Fitz was. Uh, is is he is he done first yet? ballot? Yeah, he's he's. I, no, Fitz is no. He's in. no, but he will be. I'm just saying. Oh, it's, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, really will. hard to do. Now, listen, Evans was incredible last year, but this is perfect. Like the older you get, the back half of this season is more difficult. He gets sustained by touchdowns. If Baker has a rough stretch, if they don't do what they did last year, you know, there's a lot of talk in this offense. You lost Dave Canales. You bring Liam Cohen in. A lot of talk about Chris Godwin getting more work. So, from an ADP standpoint, Mike Evans costs you a lot more than he did last year. You have the same expectations, and he's 31 years old. So, um, you know, that's tough. And and here's a here's a stat for you. Over the last decade, there have been 11 wide receivers, 31 and older, that was draft that were drafted in the first three rounds for fantasy. Three of those 11 finished in the top 20. So the the track record is not there. I love you know Mike Evans has just kind of gone to work and got it done. But I uh, got paid, you know, human nature a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. That could be. Uh, He's already rich. That could be a I little mean, tough. Yeah, Calvin Johnson, Randy Moss, Jerry Rice, Steve Largent, Paul Warfield, Lance Altworth, and Raymond Berry. Those are uh, the only. Raymond wow. Barry. Those are the only first ballot Hall of Fame wide receivers ever. Yeah. So since Which 2000, means, just Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, Calvin yeah, Johnson. That's no, so I don't think that. Evans is going to do that. So the the guy that uh, Mike Evans already has more receiving yards than was the first ballot Hall of Famer? Would that be Calvin? That would be Calvin. The guy who didn't play that much? I'm yeah, just saying. I bet a per year Totality basis. matters. Calvin it does. It does. was I'm not, look. the best wide receiver on the field I know, for most I know. of his career. All three of those guys were the best of their generation. Um, all right. So uh, there you go. There's your fantasy yeah. time machine. You know, to to not not to leave Evans, uh, the the year prior 
when you looked at the stats for Mike Evans, he finished as the wide receiver 16, and you looked at a lot of his stats, you're like, he still had 1,100 yards. He still had everything go his way. It was just kind of some touchdowns that didn't happen. It was a split of seasons, kind of like what we saw from Stephon Diggs last year. Evans was really good in the first half of that season two years ago. And then the oh, second, that was the that was the Brady year. Oh, that was the year for the where second half. the second half he crushed my soul every week. And Brady just was so bad. He just didn't catch touchdowns. I mean, until that week seventeen three oh, touchdown yeah, championship burger. Thank you, Mike Evans. But um, yeah, I mean, he can if the touchdowns don't come in a specific stretch of games, you could be very disappointed. All right, that'll do it for today's episode. We got a mock draft this week. We got our fantasy MVP show this week. And make sure you click that follow button on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening. It helps the show. And if you want to leave a review over there, that helps the show as well. And those are a couple quick ways to support the podcast. Uh, one last reminder here as we close it out, the Megala Bowl. Come compete with the Foot Clan in the largest fantasy football league on planet Earth megalobowl.com for all the details and information check that out until tomorrow goodbye thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ffballers